Do you struggle with seeing the past with your narcissistic ex through rose-colored glasses? Are you seeing only the good of what happened in the relationship or rather are you feeling only the good of what happened in the relationship and not able to process, feel, or really let the impact of how bad it was in which makes you feel even more addicted and attracted back to that narcissistic person. There's a name for what's going on there. It's called euphoric recall. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and transform your life after being around toxic narcissists. Euphoric recall is an addiction to the fantasy thinking about the past. It is recalling things in only the state of euphoric remembrance meaning it feels really good to remember the past and you're only remembering the good times, which then gives you longing to reach back to that narcissistic person. It is part of the trauma bonding process. It doesn't happen with everyone, but for people that it does happen with, this can create prolonged trauma bonding. I mean, I'm talking years at a time sometimes because people can't get past this love addicted fantasy thinking. This feels both good and bad at the same time. It feels really good to remember which makes your brain want more of it. It creates this addictive process where you will slip into the fantasy of remembering the good times and even projecting those into a perceived future that isn't actually happening. It can cause excitement, intense emotion, and interestingly, feelings of well-being, while at the same time creating the total feeling of loss, desperation, need, like a, a a drive to reach out to that toxic person stronger than anything you've ever felt in your life. Narcissistic abuse can create love addiction in you, okay? If you're a person that has things like low self-esteem, if you struggle with attachment in relationships, if you struggle with feeling loved, needing to be chosen, wanting to be special, all of these things which are normal, basic needs and feelings of people, but if you're struggling with them, like they're super intense and they are, um, they're kind of what drives your desire to be in relationships, then a narcissistic person is a perfect setup because they will give you that in small doses and then take it away and give it to you and take it away. The back and forth of the giving and taking, the love bombing and the devaluing, all of that creates the confusion in your brain. But, the, but, but also what it creates is this addiction to the process, the addiction to the process of being with the narcissist, the addiction to the relationship with the narcissist, not the narcissistic person. Does that make sense? When this is going on and you have these euphoric feelings, there's so much brain chemistry. There's so much flowing through your body that you have body reactions. You actually will have sensations of both pleasure and sensations of complete grief and loss at the same time. It is tumultuous, it is intense, and the only thing you think that will relieve it is reaching back out to that toxic person. Some of the signs you're experiencing euphoric recall besides what we just talked about, racing heart, lots of anxiety, obsessive thinking, obsessive actions. Like you might constantly be thinking about this narcissistic person 24 seven and talking to everyone you know about this toxic person and knowing that they're not good for you, but still having such a desire to be in a relationship with them, kind of obsessively, does that make sense? You might lack concentration for anything else in life. In fact, you might lose all joy and all feelings of pleasure for anything else except this fantasy. All of this something you're relating to, are you stuck in this cycle of love addicted, euphoric recall? Let me know in the comments and let's talk about ways to help you, okay? So some other things you might be noticing are you are completely blanking out on the negative experiences of the relationship or even worse and probably more common, you can recall every negative thing they've done but you don't feel anything. You don't feel the impact of how bad it was. You only feel the impact of how good it was. Does that make sense? Basically, you're trapped in the feeling of euphoria. So another thing that could be going on is that you might have a pessimistic viewpoint of your future or your present life outside of that toxic relationship. Basically, you don't see hope for the future. You don't see why what's going on now is any good. Life doesn't feel like it'll ever be okay without that toxic person. 
you might have hopelessness, and you might have mood swings. So those are just some of the symptoms that you might be experiencing euphoric recall, but what can you do about it? Okay, this is super tricky. This can trap people in the feelings of trauma bond. And you know what that's like if you've ever been through it. People who've gone through trauma bonding and recovered from trauma bonding and now they're on different phases of healing and stages of healing will remember how bad it was when they were trauma bonded after a discard. They will remember the feelings of confusion of why do I wanna reach out to that person? I don't even like them. They were horrible to me, but I can't stop thinking about them, okay? Now imagine that in a prolonged sense where all you can feel is the good of the relationship. You cannot feel how much they're horrible for your life, even though you know it logically. And it can make you feel like you don't have your own back. You don't have your own well-being in mind. People feel all kinds of negative things about themselves because of this. Like all addiction recovery, acknowledgement is important. Understanding that you are legitimately and literally addicted to this process. You're addicted to the drama with that narcissistic person. Your brain is hooked, okay? Here are a few tips to start with that can maybe help you get on your way to recovering from this. The number one thing here though, is get yourself some help if you is talk to someone who understands this, okay? Coaching or therapy might be a good approach to at least get you some tools and tips that personalized to help support you through this process, okay? Make sure you choose someone that gets it, that's either been there or understands this process really well. All right, so okay, here's a few things though to start with for now. Teaching yourself to be present in the moment inside your body, using your senses, find things that smell pleasant to you, that look pleasant to you, that taste good to you, that things that have a joyful, euphoric, happy feeling, good feelings, good sensations, whatever, that are healthy and good for you, okay? Nothing related to something that's going to harm you. Not We're not trying to replace one addiction with another. We are not trying to link it to another person so that it's outside of your own control so that you have something here to anchor into, okay? So let's say you have a candle that you like the smell of. Get the candle out. When you're feeling this euphoric recall, you're feeling, well, you're probably feeling it all the time, but anchoring in the present time. So right now, you smell the scent of this candle. That is it. You're just gonna spend a few minutes noticing. Noticing the pleasant scent of the candle in the moment. Your mind's gonna wander back to the narcissistic person and you're gonna tell your mind, not now, my friend, wait a minute. Right now, we're just gonna smell the candle. If you could hold on to that for five seconds, then you've achieved five seconds outside of your addiction. And that's awesome, okay? Because this is retraining yourself to find pleasure in the moment, to find contentment in the moment, outside of the fantasy thinking. I promise you, life with a narcissistic person isn't going to get better. It is not going to be what your fantasy wants it to be. It just isn't. Yeah, you're gonna have moments of intensity because the narcissistic devaluation and love bomb cycle creates intensity, but you are not gonna have connected, stable, secure, safe, affectionate love from a narcissistic person. The other things that can help you are meditation. Take five minutes. Be present inside your body. Find a meditation on YouTube or somewhere, right? That is short and easy and simple. Just to be present to the moment that you're in. Truly present. That's it. Nothing else. Learn that the quiet is okay. Part of the process here is going to be in taking accountability and responsibility for what is actually happening. Not your fault you're here. Not your fault this is going on. Okay. But from this point forward, you're what gets you out of this. So take responsibility for the addiction. Take responsibility for the fantasy thinking. Stop the fantasy. When my mind goes in this direction, I replace the fantasy with something else. I write a story in my head unrelated to anything else to use the creative mind that wants to go into fantasy thinking in a different way. It's not as exciting. It does not have the same appeal. However, it does Tell my brain, we are not going down that track anymore. We're going to do something different. And then I'm able to think, okay? I'm able to separate from 
the fantasy thinking. Remember that no contact with a narcissistic person is there to help you break trauma bonds. Okay, if you're no contact and you are still in this fantasy thinking, if you're still experiencing euphoric recall and you have been no contact for a while, my guess is you're not no contact in your mind. At a certain point, we have to say stop. We have to stop researching why they did what they did, who they are, what they're up to. We have to stop thinking about them. Just like you don't think about a stranger you don't know, you have to stop thinking about this person, okay? It's really important because if you're stuck in this euphoric recall, at this point, it's a pattern and you have to break the pattern. And then the last tip I'm going to say here is learn to discover yourself a little more. Right now, if you're in euphoric recall and addicted to a narcissist, you know yourself in relationship to that narcissist. You know yourself in relationship to the feelings you had in the relationship with that narcissist. Does that make sense? Try to find new things about yourself. What do you think? What do you feel? What do you notice? How do you experience life? What's it like to be you in this moment other than that stuff, right? So that's where you can you come back to using your senses. Go out and look at things. What's it like to be me experiencing looking at those flowers? That's the kind of question you might ask yourself to really understand and listen to your own point of view and your own experience. What that does is it breaks the cycle of thinking about that narcissistic person and how you relate to the world through the relationship you had with them. All right, so those are some tips. You guys, if you need anything, find me in the main description of every video, coaching, group coaching, and peer support. I'll see you guys next time. Hit the thumbs up. Bye-bye.